So we are live again today, bringing it to you every single week. I'm enjoying a little bit of Legavalin here today. I've got a feeling my guests today are going to be enjoying some stuff as well, um, just based on what I know about them. Uh, we are live on YouTube and live on, live on LinkedIn as well today. Um, as always, let me know how the quality of those streams are. We're always tweaking our settings, trying to make things better for you. Um, and as always, this is a conversation. So we want your feedback. We want your questions. Uh, we want you to steer whatever it is you want us to talk about. Um, but the topic I have in place for today is something that's important for a lot of merchants. Uh, and it is getting your Magento store ready for Black Friday. Uh, Black Friday is right around the corner. I know we've got a site, at least one site that's supposed to launch by Black Friday. So I'm very well aware of how quickly that deadline is coming. And you've got to put a lot of thought and effort into preparing for Black Friday. The last thing you want to do is to get to Black Friday and then be surprised or to not have your site ready for uh, any sort of promotions or things, or you know, maybe, maybe they're more successful than you anticipated they would be. Uh, and you want to make sure that you are ready. Um, so I, I went out and I got uh, some experts on getting Magento sites ready, uh, especially when it comes to the hosting back in the infrastructure side. Um, but we can answer any of your questions uh, when it comes to preparing your site for Black Friday. So I've got the guys here from JetRails. Fellas, if you would introduce yourselves, tell everybody a little bit about your role at JetRails. Yeah, so hi, I'm Robert Rand. I head of partnerships and alliances at JetRails and uh, glad to be here on e-commerce Aholic for twice in about a, a week. So great to have seen you, TJ, out at Majax and looking forward to talking about the holiday shopping season. Cheers. Awesome. I'm Tom Pachowski. I work with the sales team at JetRails. Uh, I've been with the company for about uh, five years now. And I spent a lot of my time uh, talking to different merchants uh, that have different uh, various platforms and just helping them uh, find the right one. Now, those streams out at Majex were a lot of fun. We tried those a little bit. They were a little bit different. We just kind of, you know, stood around and talked. I, I definitely appreciate you, Robert, jumping in there and filling in a half hour time slot. Uh, that was a, a long, exhausting four hour stream for me. So it is. It's always fun to, you know, get you back in one of these a little more, you know, casual, polished formats. Absolutely. No, it was a lot of fun. And uh, I, I think it was a great group there in uh, in Austin. I don't know exactly how many people came out to Mage X this year, but uh, I had a fantastic time. Yeah, it's great. Meet uh, that and meet Magento New York the week before. Always uh, a good time. Now, Tom, you're the sales guy. So if you would kind of give us the pitch for JetRails. 
Well, with JetRails, we provide mission critical e-commerce hosting, and uh, we really have a, a big emphasis on uh, white glove service. So we know there are many different flavors and varieties out there, and, and you know you have to find the right home for you. And I think what it all boils down to is making sure that you have the, the perfect trifecta when it comes to uh, finding your hosting partner. You have to have your development team that's uh, in tune with them. You have to have one uh, point of contact from the uh, merchant side. And you, you you just have to have all three people uh, working together hand in hand. So it's just mirroring all those three together. I think that's what separates us from most. Absolutely. We've got people spooling up in the uh, live streams. It takes a little while after these notifications go out uh, for everybody to kind of make their way into the room. So for those that are just getting here, I see Dan Davies in the chat there on YouTube. Uh, if you're in the chat, if you're watching, uh, let me know. Let me know you're here. Let us know where you're watching from. Um, let us know if you have any questions in particular about uh, Black Friday preparations for uh, Magento stores. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna kind of get into some topics that we've outlined and in, in, in regards to this uh, conversation. But we are happy to derail that conversation anytime uh, if you have something in particular that you want to uh, you want to talk about. Now I, I'm just gonna throw some of these topics out there. Uh, you guys can just kind of fight over who wants to talk about them. You, we, we'll figure this out. It, it, we're not used to having. Um, two guests on here at the same time, so forgive us if we talk over each other a little bit, but we'll work it out. It's a casual stream. If we didn't have problems, it would be fun, right? It'd be boring if everything just went to plan. So uh, first, let, let's um, let's talk about seeing how you know JetRails is a host. What does it look like to get ready for Black Friday or the holiday season in general from a hosting perspective? Well, I, I got to say for Black Friday, uh, discussions usually should start to happen a few months prior to Black Friday with the merchants. So we're late already. <laughs> we are indeed. <laughs> Could possibly be. Uh, you know, depending on uh, who the host is, you know, they're, they're either going to be proactive or they're going to be reactive to uh, the merchant's needs when that Black Friday season hits. So uh, you'll see some hosts out there uh, get prepared and start battling it out as a stream of tickets starts to flood in and they're they're helping everybody out. And some might just be taking some extra time and planning things in advance with their clients. So I think um, with taking calls from uh, merchants uh, that have lost revenue in the past and you know they don't wanna have that happen again, having those conversations a few months uh, in advance is critical. Now, what do those conversations typically look like? Like I, I'm a merchant, or even if I'm an agency and I, I manage merchants and I'm I'm that liaison, you know, that technical liaison with uh, the host in in many cases for my merchants. What kind of conversations should we be having? Like, what should I be calling? What should we be planning? What should we be discussing? So I can give you an example. Um, one that uh, a, a conversation I had last year where a merchant was on a single dedicated server, and there were not sure whether they're going to withstand the uh, the traffic spike that was coming during black friday so we started uh, discussing we started looking at the google analytics and dissecting things seeing what their traffic patterns look like for the year before and we realized that their traffic was pretty stagnant for pretty much the whole year except for black friday so in, in that case it almost didn't make sense for them to have to spend a, a lot of money on all the fancy bells and whistles that uh, that are available out there. So we we helped them out by creating a clustered solution and added a couple of extra web nodes to help them through that busy season. And then after that traffic spike went away, we removed the web nodes without any maintenance. And then they just kind of kept going as, as, as things normally would go. So it's just a matter of making sure you work with the host to understand the unique situation your business is in. Like, are we gonna are we gonna talk about what we did last Black Friday? Is that um, do we normally go back to that? Try to get a good idea of what to expect. Um, are there you know do we have conversations around what our marketing strategy is? I, I'm assuming you know for most people the big problem is the sudden unexpected spike and trying to take as much of the unexpected out of that as possible. 
I would agree. And, and in most cases, they have a pretty good idea. You know, these are businesses that have been you know, running for years and they've seen what has happened historically and they kind of know what they're going to expect for for the Black Friday season. And then there are others, too, that we work with that are on more uh, auto scaled uh, style solutions that there is a, some level of unpredictability there. So then that's where you have the auto scaling, uh, like on AWS, for example, that comes into play there. Yeah, we've got some chatter I, here. Oh, go ahead, Robert. Yeah, I, I would add that it's not always, uh, you know, it's very important to look at last year's numbers, right? You know, that the, the analytics, the data tells a story. But you can't go on that alone because over the course of the year, you could have made a lot of development changes to the site. There could be, a, you know, a, a lot of improvement. And um, with that can come different bottlenecks. So I, I would still always recommend load testing and planning out, making sure that you're really leveraging your CDN, your caching, all the layers that that should be helping you when, when you get a peak traffic kind of a situation, when you get those spikes. That's a good point. So it's not it's not necessarily about just handling an additional spike, but also about evaluating to make sure that you're effectively using what you already have access to. Absolutely. Okay. Um, we've got some chatter in the uh, in the chat here in YouTube. Uh, Dan is over as as a Brit. He's he's a Brit. We won't we won't take that personally. Um, but apparently they don't have Black Friday. So he's like, this Black Friday thing is new to me. How long has this been a thing in the U.S.? Uh, as pretty much as long as I can remember. Do you guys have any idea when Black Friday really kind of took hold and got started? I, I, I couldn't tell you anymore. I, I've, I've seen articles on it in the past. I haven't seen anything yet this year. Uh, so it's not fresh in my mind. But it's it's going on a long time here. In, in essence, uh, and whether it's that specific Black Friday spike or, you know, now we've had for years Cyber Monday, just in general, the holiday shopping season where some merchants see a, a huge percentage of their retail sales, um, even if it's not all in one day, seasonally, th from the infrastructure perspective, from the e-commerce perspective, for us, what's crucial is that you have the resource you need when you need it. Just the same as merchants that are big in, uh, I don't know, you know, Mother's Day or uh, Valentine's Day or other holidays or other times a year that uh, you really need to perform when you need to perform. Yeah, and I, you know, we forget that this is an international audience sometimes. Um, so, hmm. you know, just to make sure I define this for those that maybe are watching that are not in the U.S. or not familiar with, with Black Friday, um, the as Robert mentioned, the majority of e-commerce happens during the Christmas holiday. So December, basically late November, um, Black Friday is a term that's come to denote the Friday after Thanksgiving. So it's the, I believe it's always the last Friday in, in November. Uh, and so that, that is usually the day where people have a lot of sales and a ton of e-commerce activity begins in a very short time period. And I say e-commerce, it's actually all, all retail activity, um, in stores, everything really spikes up, um, starting on, on that Friday and some, sometimes actually starting, uh, Thursday, you know, Thanksgiving, uh, at, at some point you see a lot of merchants uh, backing off that Thursday thing now, but. Uh, yeah, there were some that were that were staying open all night long, um, Thursday night. Not necessarily the best thing for their employees in some cases, but uh, there's that <laughs> history, and at least in the United States, of folks lining up, sometimes camping out in front of stores because there are, you know, doorbuster deals where the first however many people through the door get some amazing, fantastic deal on electronics or other high ticket items and so they're they're you know they, they're just camped out there um there are certainly videos and news stories about and photos where this doesn't go all that well where there's a mad frenzy a, a dash through the door to run in and, and grab things first luckily i'd say that e-commerce has helped to civilize some of that by taking some of the pressure off of the retail stores and by bringing the shoppers online where they don't have to get up at three in the morning in order to be online at, at some uh, store and where they may or may not get what they're hoping for. And that, that e-commerce has really brought some <laughs> maturity to the, the Black Friday sale. Now on, a, on the agency side, you know, we obviously write a lot of code, modify a bunch of sites. 
And so, you know, we're we're familiar with something they call code freeze, which is basically when you stop working on the site, like there's no more new code going into the website. Uh, do you guys have any best practices around code freezes? Like, should they happen? When should they happen? How far in advance of the site should they happen uh, for testing purposes? Like, what are your thoughts around code freeze in general? Code freeze, uh, while you would think it's a, a best practice, um, the average uh, uh, consumer or merchant might not practice that all the time. And you can just, just based off of the tickets that we see, they're they're always sitting there scrambling last minute with the, uh, maybe something that they want to get changed right away. And, and that can kind of go bad sometimes, you know? Mm. So if, if the merchant's really expecting to uh, make their money on Black Friday and keep unexpected scenarios from happening, we recommend to at least be a, a week or two out uh, before you make, you know, just stop. Stop what you're doing and then make sure that nothing's broken. Yeah, ideally, the client's going to go through user acceptance testing, so to speak, the same kind of testing that we have our clients go through when they migrate over to JetRails to make sure that all the important facets of their site are working. And then they're going to stop because the last thing that you want to do is, I think the technical term is uh, get caught with your pants down. <laughs> you, you don't want to have your most important, busiest days of the year and have code that was recently implemented that may or may not work to your advantage that um, at some point better to stick with the devil you know um, than keep tooling with it um, and i'd say even the same for launching a new version of the site that um, you know some folks i've seen in previous years scrambled to launch their new magento 2 site you know a week or two before their busiest sale days and i, I always find that you know on average to be a mistake because when you have any significant project like that, you're bound to have some issues. Um, you know, you're bound to have some hiccups along the way. And, and that's not when you want to be debugging. So is that just a lack of preparation, you think, you know, with the pushing to the last minute, uh, not not giving yourself enough time to do it or are merchants just trying to, you know, to shove everything in under the deadline that they can? From my From perspective, I, I think that... Yeah, the, the merchants um, and their developers, whether in-house or whether agency, projects often take longer than expected. Um, there are often delays along the way. Sometimes it's because there are third parties involved and it has nothing to do with the, the planning stage. There are unknowns. Um, that's the nature of the business. So you thought that this extension was going to work just fine, but now there were code conflicts with another extension um, or app or some other issue along the way. And, you, you know, it should have been there in a more timely fashion, according to your plan, but <laughs> Murphy's Law kicked in and that plan went out the window. So I, I think it's not necessarily always about poor planning. Um, it's about sometimes not choosing when to institute a freeze and just run with what you have. And, uh, you know, and, and call it a day <laughs> and play it on the safe side. Sometimes it's almost like you're at the table in the casino, you're at the, you're at the machine and you've got so much already in that you don't know when to walk away from it. And it's more of that mentality that sometimes kicks in, that it's hard to stop something that you've already started. Uh, and which y'all, you audio went haywire again on us. Um... <laughs> Yeah, you might you might test that. That went that went nuts. All of a sudden, sounded like Darth Vader. I'll give it a test. Yeah, it's still pretty bad, man. It's still pretty. All bad. right. We had that just just to let everybody know that's listening. We had that happen a couple of times while we were just going through tests before we came live, but it it happened for two seconds and then it went away. Um, so not not sure. Are you there, Robert? I'm here. Any better? Yes, it sounds sounds great. Um, any right. clue as to what that was? Absolutely no idea. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. I, that's uh, the, the technical that. folks love problems that have absolutely no clues as to what they are. Um, but Tom, any, anything you want to add to that as far as, you know, is it just um, lack of preparedness or um, do you agree with Robert? No, I think Robert summed it all up. I mean, more than more than enough. Okay. Uh, so, you know, you've got the busiest time of the year. Like, all your eggs are in this basket. I know customers are – we've had quite a few clients that did half or more of their e-commerce from Black Friday through 
like a week before Christmas. So you've got a few weeks to capture uh, huge portions of your business. Um, what are the biggest concerns for merchants going into that time period? Well, I could tell you uh, this doesn't directly relate to uh, Black Friday, but uh, last year I had uh, a client of ours call us. Um, it was right, right before Valentine's Day, actually. Uh, they're in the flower and the candy business. And he, uh, he gets a call from a, a local competitor. And uh, that local competitor was actually threatening to take his site down. And they're so close to each other, not only uh, online, but uh, physically, where you know, sometimes they could even get confrontational in person that way. But uh, the long and short of the story is he was threatened with a, a DDoS attack by his competitor. So he was like, well, hey, Jet Rails, what do we do? Uh, how do I prepare for this? So, of course, you know, we, we start talking about uh, getting behind a, a web application firewall and getting prepared for those unexpected scenarios that, well, in this case, it was expected. But uh, for Black Friday, if you don't have your competitors directly calling you out like that, you might just be getting hit or scraped with uh, by bots or just unknown malicious activity. So anything you could do to set yourself up to block that before it ever hits your site, you'll be you'll be that much uh, farther ahead of the game. Okay. Outside of that, are there any other kind of obvious threats um, or potential problems that are pretty simple for someone to avoid? So I, I'll add that it, it's a great reminder. You know, I, I don't think that there's a particular time of year that's more important. Then another, aside from the fact to say that, you know, you have the most traffic in a certain season, that's the most dangerous in terms of security. Not only do you want to know that you have protection from DDoS attacks and from other things, but you want to know that you have a patched up to date website. You want to know that your hosting environment is up to date. I know Magento was uh, putting out announcements uh, over the last week or so about PHP updates that, that need to be applied. Um, you you want to know that your entire environment top to bottom is really sitting pretty, um, that you always want that to be the case, but it's doubly dangerous uh, when you really need your site to be up. Uh, you know, you can't afford business wise for anything to go wrong where other times a year it, it's going to be ugly, but um, it may not put you out of business. You know, you really can't roll the dice this time of year. Absolutely. For those that are out there watching, keep in mind, this is a live Q&A. So we are not just here to talk at you. If you got questions, let me know in the chat, whether it's LinkedIn or on YouTube, and we will get those questions uh, going. We definitely got a good, interesting conversation going between Dan uh, Davies and Cali Experiments here on YouTube. Uh, we've got uh, Jay Cathy over on uh, LinkedIn letting us know that he's watching as well. Um, so keep, keep those questions coming. We'll be happy to get any of those answered. Uh, so if a merchant encounters a problem, say, say we get into Black Friday and all hell breaks loose, who should they be calling? That's a great question. That, I think that goes back to um, that, that perfect trifecta that you have. You know, in a perfect world, you, there should be uh, you know, one person, one stakeholder from each uh, organization. Uh, just from my experience, when you have somebody from the agency side, you have somebody or a point of contact at uh, your hosting side, and you have somebody internally that's that's really uh, managing everything and spearheading it and looking at everything. If you have a central place for all of them to uh, communicate and dissect any kind of challenge that comes to light, I think that's the, the best way of, of going about it. So what we have done here at JetRails within our client area we make sure that when a ticket does get open, you'll have the right people uh, CC'd on that ticket, whether it's open by the agency, whether it's open by the client or from our side. Having that transparency all the way around at that moment in time is, is vital, I think. Yeah. And above and beyond that, we operate a knock out of Chicago. We're monitoring sites for our clients. And so often if there is an issue, uh, we are most likely to know first, we can start to dive in, diagnose, uh, try to mitigate, let's say it's a DDoS attack and we can start to, you know, tamp down, you know, even further security rules and things. 
um, that time is money. So monitoring, regardless of who's responsible for it, um, is crucial. Someone should be. Yeah, it's, I want to just reiterate something there just to make, make it clear. You know, I, I feel like it's very important if you're using Magento that you have a development partner, whether it's internal resources or whether you're actually using an agency, you have development that is a good partner with your hosting. Um, because oftentimes it's the communication between those two that is critical to quickly resolving uh, any of these problems. So the last thing you want as a Magento merchant, if you're having problems, is for one person to be pointing fingers at another. You know, you, you need to make sure you have true tested partners that are actually there for you, that are, that are there for the greater good to make sure your project's a success and not just to cover their own basis. Um, absolutely. I mean, I assume. Yeah, but you're yeah from the JetRails perspective. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, I, I oversee partnerships. So if, if those weren't important, I don't know where I'd be sitting today, but it, it really is. And when I onboard a new partner on behalf of the JetRails team, you know, yes, there are things that we get to do with partners around marketing and, you know, supporting through, you know, events and other things. Um, you know, speaking of TJ, we've got to have you on the Jet Rails podcast soon. Um, Let me know. We'll Anytime. find a, a good slot for you. Absolutely. Um, but I, I, I start off really focused on the Jet Rails <laughs> stack, the Jet Rails support, uh, you know, style and, and that white glove support that we provide and how our teams are gonna to work together towards success. Because for us, there's no use in a partnership where the customers aren't happy at the end of the day. Um, it's really, really important that we get to work together. It's not about finger pointing. It's not about kicking the can. It's about resolving issues and rising the occasion. And at the end of the day, bringing success for our clients. And if we're all doing that, life is good. And that's where you see successful agencies. That's where you see successful web hosts. Great. Um, let's see. We've got some more listed here, but again, keep questions coming. If anybody has, nobody has any questions about Black Friday today, I guess, you know, maybe it's too late in the day. Everybody's just exhausted. I know it's been a very, very long week over here. So we'll just keep going through my topics here. Um, and so what other preventative maintenance can merchants do to help make sure that their websites are ready? for that peak traffic. Preventative so, maintenance. Uh, I'll, yeah, you talked about that yeah. a little bit, but I just, that yeah. was, you, you talked about it a little bit as part of another question. I just want to make sure we isolate this uh, on its own just to make sure we cover it thoroughly. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll add a couple of things. I would say um, there are basics that you should be looking at in your hosting environment, like how much disk space you have left. Um, you know, a, a, as your database is swelling and um, you're getting you know all sorts of orders and things going on, um, not a time that you want to be having any issues uh, at all. Um, I also recommend moving into the holiday shopping season. A great time to, if you're on a platform like Magento, to be checking your error and exception logs. Um, to be looking out for anything that might be flagging an issue for you that you may not have noticed, might not have been reported to you. But when you get that uh, traffic spike, that it's going to be exacerbated that now, you know, instead of maybe, uh, you know, it was causing a little bit of grief. Now you're really bleeding out from it. Um, so just following best practice to test everything, almost like a tune up, <laughs> you know, you get a multi point inspection, you know that everything is healthy. Anything you I want to add to that? Yeah. About, yeah, I can speak a little bit about what not to do potentially. <laughs> uh, even better. So, Those are always better stories. I like there. that. So I, we had a I had a conversation. This was about a year ago with a with a, a merchant that was using a service, and I forget the name of it. Now I think it might have been something like Hewitt, where they weren't sure how to. Uh, run load tests on their site. They weren't sure if they, they can handle all that activity activity that they were about to get. So they used this uh, Qwit service to put all their web visitors in a line and just kind of put up a little static page with a countdown and said, hey, you're number 57 or 58 in line and you can probably get in there in about 15 minutes or so. And mm. what ends up happening is you're just kind of, it's kind of like 
think of it as a retail store, right? You're, you're at Best Buy. You're waiting in line. Not us, of course, but there's others that wait like eight, nine, ten hours with their sleeping bags. You know, it's it's midnight. They're waiting there all night. And then Best Buy opens up one door and then all these people start flocking through. Right. And they're all squeezing through the door and then they're trying to go buy their products. Well, basically, they're just you got to make sure you open up your doors. Let the people that want to buy come in and buy. So rather than using those types of services to, to get people in line, do the right thing so you can actually let them all in. Unless you've got a new drop of Yeezys, then put them in a line, <laughs> make them wait. That just adds to the hype, right? Yeah. And speaking of adding in other technology, I, I think it's also a great time to do an extension cleanup. So whatever apps, whatever extensions, whatever modules or plugins that you're using in your particular site, if you're not getting value out of it, it might be really a great time to turn it off, disable it, remove it. Um, that part of that sort of, I guess it's not quite spring cleaning, but uh, <laughs> winter cleaning, <laughs> um, that it, it's a great opportunity. It's just like any other software, right? You know, that you're running more, uh, more software on, on your PC or Mac or other device. It can slow it down. It can cause issues no reason to have anything running there, whether for speed or security or anything else that you don't need. Um, and on the speed side, um, you know, we're in the web hosting business. Uh, not surprisingly, we talk a lot about loading speed optimization and there's a lot that we do for that, but um, you know, that can help you to handle more of a load on the site. It also increases your conversion rates. You know, it's <laughs> not, not really up for debate these days that, uh, faster websites have higher conversion rates, that it's something that um, we also highly recommend testing well in advance, that um, we've got a free speed test on the JetRail site that tests time to first byte. There's other great speed tests out there like GT Metrics. Uh, you know, I, I think we all have a few favorites, but Google's got at least three different speed and mobile optimization uh, tests of their own. Um, great time to be making sure that you're well situated with that stuff. Now, are there anything, you know, any sort of tips you've seen for merchants to actually optimize their speed? You know, any, any maybe out of the box, out of the box ideas you've seen any of your customers do um, to really limit the load on the server? Well, what I can tell you is one of the biggest things that I've seen lately has less to do with uh, what's happening with the servers, but it has to do with the actual checkout process. So we all know the big, uh, I think the big gorilla in the room is uh, Amazon, and they have that Amazon one-click checkout. And there's a pretty cool company out there, uh, Bolt, that uh, has something you can almost plug and play right into your site and give your consumers that one-click experience. That uh, I've seen uh, a lot of uh, merchants uh, have success with and, and actually make more money. Yeah, we, uh, I've been we, surprised we, by the merchant feedback there. Yeah, that it's it's yeah. been pretty good. And we've been getting closer with the Bolt team as a result. You'd think maybe as a web host that we'd want that traffic going through the, the native checkout of Magento or whatever platform because, you know, that that adds to the server load. Maybe the user has more hosting need. Um, for us, just the opposite. If it's bringing merchant success, it's great. We just uh, put out a white paper um, with uh, with Big Commerce and Bolt, and um, we had them on JetRail's podcast. And you know, the, <laughs> the proof's in the pudding. Uh, the stuff really does seem to have the right impact. Yeah, we had a live stream about a month ago with Bolt here on the channel, um, and it's increased your conversion rate by simplifying your checkout. If you want to. Uh, check that out. Learn a little bit more about uh, Bolt. Uh, definitely interested in in Bolt and checkout. Um, we we actually have a PWA Magento PWA Studio project uh, that we're evaluating Bolt for right now, just to kind of you know hand off all all potential checkout issues um, for the same reason because we're we're going to launch it right before Black Friday. Um, but it's mm -hmm. it's for a merchant where their current environment just there's no way to make it handle the traffic. And so the risk of launching something brand new uh, is is more appealing to them than trying to trying to weather through what they've got going currently, um, because it's a it's let's just say it's another open source PHP shopping cart that is not near as robust as Magento. We'll we'll leave it at that. 
I'm sure somebody Boy, could yeah. go guess what that one is. Um, all right, so you know, like, are there are there anything like you know categorization changes or anything like that that might be useful um, for a Magento merchant, maybe to kind of streamline uh, the user experience or the load on the server? I get to put back on my marketing hat. Uh, so uh, I, I definitely, um, I, I'd say that it's very much case by case that, uh, you know, it really depends on who your customer base is, what your catalog looks like, but especially if you've got a sizable, robust catalog, you can benefit from creating holiday categories. Um, you can benefit from creating categories that are for him, for her, um, under $20, over $100, you know, again, really depends on your merchandising mix in the first place, whether you have those things in your main menu, whether you've got links from your homepage, whether you just have featured holiday products somewhere, um, it can absolutely make it easier because it's about navigation. It's about ease of finding what you're looking for. So if I'm trying to buy something for, for my kid and I know that, um, you know, that she likes things from a certain brand, if they've already got for me, you know, this section that I can go to to just pick from their highlighted recommended stuff. Fantastic. Speed, speeds up the process, gets me through it faster. Um, conversion happens. Yeah, your, your audio is going nuts there, man. It's doing it again. It's doing it again. All right. You there? Can't take me anywhere. There you go. I, I don't. What's your problem, man? No, I'm just it's fine. Uh, like I I say, it's a casual live stream. Stuff happens, man. We've had we've had guests just stop and try to do the stream in their car on their cell phone. You know, people stopping at um, you know coffee shops where there's dogs barking, and it you know some people show up, and it sounds like people are getting murdered in the background. Like we've seen it all. It's fine. Uh, you know, it's all about providing good content. Sometimes you have technical glitches. Um, we're, we are far from perfect, so uh, apologize if that's uh, loud in anybody's ear when it goes a little haywire, but we'll continue going through because hopefully you guys are getting some usefulness, some value out of this. Uh, again, I remind you that this is a Q&A uh, conversation, so if anybody wants to know more about Black Friday preparations or if you want, if you want to talk about college football, I don't care. Ask some questions. We'll talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. We've been going for about 40 minutes now. <laughs> Um, so we're going to go 15, 20 more minutes. Uh, then we're going to go enjoy our Wednesday uh, evening. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and get those questions in, and we'll be happy to get to those. Um, all right, so, you know, have you guys seen any – obviously you want to you wanna try to lighten the load of the site. You want to streamline the site. You know, we, we've oftentimes recommended for merchants that – are just hell bent on having large graphics or, you know, really, really um, detailed graphics to streamline those, especially for the high load, just to make sure um, they can, they can handle that spike, even if it, you know, they revert it back later. Um, any recommendations around how to handle graphics and design assets uh, to get the most out of, out of your site's performance? You know, so we uh, we benefit from using CDN technology. Uh, our standard go to is Cloudflare. Um, you know, we, we work very closely with the Cloudflare team, and we've got some some great stuff uh, operating there. Um, there are other image optimization CDNs that we can pair together. So there's a lot that you can do on that side. And part of what that that can do is it, it can serve up the right size image for the right device, the right browser. Um, automatically serve up the, the minimum size possible. Uh, so th there are some options out there above and beyond optimizing the image before you upload it to the site, um, you know, and, and add it to your site in the first place. Yeah, and I wanted to touch on that a little more just to make sure we elaborate. Um, for, for those that maybe don't know, you know, we, again, we, we try to make sure our content's accessible for um, various uh, technical levels. Um, a CDN is basically a content delivery network is that that's that's the correct um uh, use correct. of that acronym and, and basically what that what a cdn is is you can put your static assets your images your css your javascript you know anything that 
doesn't really, isn't dynamically generated on the website, you can store that stuff on another server. That server oftentimes is optimized for serving that type of content. So it's a lot faster to do so. You can oftentimes tell a CDN, I want a uh, the, the smallest version of this image. Or that CDN could oftentimes, you know, depending on the CDN you use, it could serve that from a server closer to the user um, so that it can push that content down to them faster. Um, there's also the added benefit of, um, I know HTTP 1 used to be real bad about this. I, I don't know if HTTP 2 is a lot better, but there's only so many threads you can download from a server. And if you split that up over multiple servers, you have some on the CDN, some on your server, that's just more things downloading at one time so that the site eventually renders and loads a lot faster. Um, anything I said there incorrect, guys? I don't, I don't want to be misleading with any of that. Sounds perfect. I think Cloudflare is hiring right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, sales is not my thing. As, as we've said you on know, this many times, I'm terrible at selling anything. Uh, I'll just pretty you know, much tell you like it is. With uh, with Cloudflare, what's what's really nice is uh, you can just hop on to uh, Magento Marketplace. You can get a, the, the free uh, Cloudflare module that we built for Magento 1 and 2. So for those of you folks that are out there um, that are already running on Magento 1 or 2, and you have Cloudflare, go ahead and get that plug-in. It's free. You can get right into it through your Magento uh, admin and uh, do your management there without having multiple places to um, to drop back and forth from. So merchants are used – these days, organic traffic is hard to come by. Like, it is, it is, it is difficult. And if you were lucky enough to be early and you've got great SEO ranking, fantastic. But – um, you know, most people are having to drive uh, traffic through PPC. Uh, any tips for how maybe they should adjust or change their SEO or PPC strategies during the holidays? So on the SEO strategy, ideally, you've got that locked down well before now. Um, it's still possible to rank for some content, but... It's not a ton of time. Um, so depending, you might get some things up there because you've got a really high ranking site. And if you put it out now, um, it'll bounce up to the top of, of Google and other search engines. But ideally, you cater some content to what shoppers are potentially searching this time of year. And you can do research on that. And that can be, you know, gift ideas, how to choose between, what's the difference between, you know, what educating the consumer, being an expert. Instead of being Amazon, which is, as I refer to it, a place with digital shelves, you know, watching Toys R Us go out of business, um, it, Toys R Us became just a place with shelves. You didn't go there for expertise. You didn't go there for assistance. Um, they weren't really there to, to bring you extra value as a business. They'd gotten past that point. And, and so for me, the more that a business can tell the story, retain that domain expertise, whether it's with articles, videos, um, you know, helping people to understand what are the the features that differentiate, you know, so whether it's electronics or, um, you know, whether, whether it's something else, uh, you know, that uh, helping the consumer make a choice is a great place to be, helping them to find what they're looking for, um, above and beyond just being a place with products. Um, so that's on, on the SEO. On the pay-per-click side, I'd say, you know, I've seen merchants that wait until they're really into the shopping season to put their ads up. And ideally, from my vantage point, you should be running the ads now. You should be testing and measuring what's getting the, the most benefit, you know, especially for things that aren't don't necessarily have, a, I don't know, you know, Santa Claus in the ad or something. But um, they're, they're more focused on, let's say, your your Google, uh, uh, your product uh, display ads, your, your PDAs, your remarketing ads, um, things that are going to drive in traffic that are going to get you sales, that are going to help you to close sales. Uh, you want to know now what's working so that when there's 10 times the, the people searching and you're going to spend 10 times the money uh, in buying up clicks, because that's when you're going to put your big budget, you already know which ads are going to work, which keywords are going to work, which products are going to sell. Um, which regions you do best in, which times a day, mobile versus desktop, all those important metrics. And you are going to put your budget where it's going to do you the most good. 
um, that always better to test and measure when you know <laughs> you're not in the thick of it, and then know that you're really in a position to shine when that big traffic uh, comes along. Definitely, uh, we've got some great conversation going here in the chat. Um, we've got uh, Cali Experiments and Dan have been chatting back and forth. Cali mentions that preparation is key. I've seen websites go down that weren't ready for the traffic. I, I think that's always the most important thing for Black Friday is a uh, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Uh, and so be sure to, you know, do, do what's reasonable with your business. There, there are always exceptions, you know, where you were prepared and it went way beyond what you expected. I mean, I don't, I don't think anybody could reasonably be prepared for anything that might possibly happen. Have you guys, you have any maybe stories or have you seen anything where somebody did everything right and it still wasn't enough? Hmm. Yeah, I, I can tell you from, from my agency days, something that, that I would run into merchants would reach out. They were having problems. Um, they, you know, try to get us to jump in, you know, they weren't even necessarily our clients at the time, but you know, they, they had spoken to us in the past, something had, had come up and, you know, putting my hosting hat on, you'd find folks that were in shared environments and they weren't necessarily the ones having the issues. It was someone else on the server. Something was going on where someone else was causing them grief and they didn't even understand what was happening. Um, so sometimes understanding whether you're in a cloud or whether you're um, uh, you know that you're in a shared server. You know, sometimes you don't even realize that you're in a shared environment, that you're in a cloud account that's not really a single tenant, that's not all on its own. Um, I'd say things like that uh, that surprise you because it's the last thing that you think is going to happen. It's not what you prepare for. You think that you've got a hosting account and it does the job. Um, things like that are, are surprising. And I know Tom and I were talking about a case earlier uh, where there was someone... Um, who wasn't necessarily properly prepared because their Google Analytics were incorrect and they hadn't really tested and didn't understand that they had the wrong traffic figures. Um, so what they were preparing for was incorrect. <laughs> so sometimes it's the, it's the accidents along the way or the misconceptions that, that get in the way. Um, usually when you've got a, a good agency and TJ, I'm sure you, uh, you, you know, you're part of solutions for, for folks, uh, so that they don't run into those types of situations. Um, but it's about having, you know, good advisors, good consultants in the mix that are going to catch issues before they turn into a problem. All right. We've got, uh, Mihai Ardlanu. Ardlanu. Did I, did I get that right? Mihai, let me know if I pronounced your name. Uh, correctly. I'd love to get that right. Um, all right. And he's got a question. I'm trying to, I'm trying to clarify um, how to prepare a product page to accelerate BF sales. You guys like what I'm trying to accelerate sales is add to cart discount countdown a solution. Uh, Mihai, if you would just clarify that question, I want to get you an answer on that, but I want to make sure we fully understand exactly, um, what, what you're asking to, to get you an answer to that. So, um, I'll, we'll move on to my next topic, but if you clarify, we'll come back to it and I will definitely get you, uh, an answer. Um, this one's in our, our list of topics here. Um, I think this was one guy, one of those you guys had, had posted, um, so, you know, really talking about marketing, I, I think this is a little more marketing related, not necessarily Black Friday, but, you know, what are your thoughts on marketing products versus marketing a brand, especially if there's any, anything intriguing there around Black Friday? So I, I like to think of that um, actually fitting in well with the holidays, because I think we all get swamped with offers, whether on, in email, which is crucial around the holidays, or um, you know, in some cases, SMS push notifications, uh, you know, social media for sure. We all see sales, new products, recommended products. That's not necessarily always, you know. Yes, if there's a super duper sale that is intriguing, that hey, look, you know, I I would have bought that 
Um, or maybe I wouldn't have bought that unless it was that cheap or, or I would have bought it. But at that price, I'm definitely buying it now. That stuff is great. But and it's not just millennials that this applies to anymore. Um, I don't know if it ever was, but telling the story of your brand, being able to talk about how you're giving back this holiday season, um, let alone all year long, talking about your employees and, and how hard at work they are, sharing insights about your team and, and your business and uh, even things going on in your industry, I think is crucial. And I think that those types of efforts mixed with the others generate uh, better results. The, the newest um, episode of the Jet Rails podcast talks specifically about email marketing. Um, we had some friends from uh, eMarsis and, uh, and Webula on, and, and we really dove into some of that. Um, I, I'm a believer in telling the story of your brand alongside uh, the offerings that you have. Yeah, we've got a, a, I've got a, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say that kind of ties into, um, we're talking about Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but what about after the fact? What about all those web visitors that actually may have put something into the cart? I, I have these conversations with our, our clients all the time. What about all the abandoned carts? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's definitely because, you know, you've never, you, you're not going to get more traffic typically, most people than than you do right now and so you're never going to have more abandoned carts i i think i you know it's i agree with both of you guys that you're, you're going to have a ton of eyeballs on your brand now is the time to start you've got to figure out in in this day and age with customer acquisition so high you have to figure out how to build a relationship with the customer so they come back and so if they're coming here once to buy something how can you get them to come back and I think, you know, sharing more content, sharing your story, uh, you know, building, trying to build that relationship is key, not to mention continuing to try to, um, you know, figure out some strategies around driving those abandoned carts into whether it's just sending them into a newsletter so you at least have some way to stay in touch with them or actually converting them into sales. Uh, very, very important. You know, I, th I think it's a walk before you run type of situation. So it depends on how sophisticated you are as a merchant right now. Um, but those strategies could pay off in spades for sure. Yeah. And some systems like remarketing, you know, if you're already running Google ads, you can run it through there. You can use a third party like AdRoll or Steelhouse or what have you. That there, There's lots of systems out there that'll help with it. Um, lots of things you can do through uh, ad systems like, like Facebook ads. Being able to stay sticky with the customer. It's just like back in the day, you'd send uh, a mailer out, you know, and the first time people threw it out and the second time they looked at it for a few more seconds and threw it out. And there's those magic numbers of how many times you need to touch someone until there's a conversion. Um, I, I think that remarketing um, and, and retargeting can help with, with some of that. Um, there's abandoned cart emails that you can be sending out. So if you're using a uh, you know, a good email marketing system, you can do some of that. Some of the better email marketing systems will even do an abandoned browse. So someone came to the site, they're known to the website, but they didn't actually make a purchase on the spot. Um, you've got data on what pages they were on. You can send them a follow-up. And there are figures on this. You know, you start to understand after trying out different campaigns, what's working for your customer base, for your site, what makes the most sense. Um, but definitely trying to get them to follow you on social to, uh, you know, to sign up for a newsletter. All that stuff is is huge. Um, you, you definitely want to retain the opportunity to make a sale in the future, even if you don't seal the deal on the spot. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to get back. We've got about six minutes left um, in our time. We'll go over if you guys continue to have questions. Um, I don't know what Jet Rail's schedule looks like, but everybody's always embarrassed to say they have to go. Um, so I'll, I'll just kind of, uh, you know, bait them into staying a little longer if you've got questions. Uh, Mihai, uh, I think I've got a clarification on his question here. Um, how do you prepare a product page to accelerate Black Friday sales? Uh, perhaps an add to cart discount countdown, you know, to where, and he clarifies that a little more, where he saw a feature where if you add it to cart immediately, you have a bigger discount. And if you wait a few seconds, you know, as time goes on, uh, the discount decreases. 
Um, I, I wouldn't personally go that approach for a few reasons. Um, and I, I definitely want you guys' opinion on this, but I'll, I'll take this one first in that it tends to I, – I, me personally, if I go to a page that does that, I lose trust with them because I know they're bullshitting me. Like I, I can just reload the page or come up in an incognito window, and if I got the same discount and it starts over, then I instantly don't trust them. They're playing games with me. They're not very serious uh, about my business. Now, test it. Maybe it works for you. It may work in some scenarios – um, social selling and trying to create some sort of time limitation on buying, yes. But having the discount change, especially if you're not sticking to it. Like if you're sticking to it, if you have a, this discount goes down 5% every hour and it starts at 10 a.m. And it actually goes down 5% every hour throughout the day so that if I, you know, it starts at 20 and then I come back and it's 15, and then it's 10, and then it's 5, and then it's no discount. Experiment with that. It really depends on your market, what you're trying to sell, um, those types of things. But if you're just faking it, uh, I, I really feel like that could burn the trust with your customers uh, more than actually build something with them. But if you're doing, a, hey, this is, I've only got three more of these available, or somebody in, you know, Paducah, Kentucky just bought this. Uh, or, you know, this is this sale's only going to be going on for seven more hours. You better buy it now. All of those things, yes, try those things. Those things can work. I've seen clients use them very successfully. But don't resort to tricks that you're not actually adhering to. Like if it's just a fake countdown for fake countdown's sake, uh, you're, you're not doing yourself any favors. Uh, you, What are your guys' thoughts? Well, this takes yeah, me so. back to a couple of weeks ago at Meet Magento New York, uh, where with the high uh, high conversion and PayPal uh, initiative that's going on, where I, I think, I believe it was um, Imagination Media uh, put together uh, a case study where they changed, and Robert, you can correct me on this, I think you spent more time on that, but they changed the cart in the uh, little buy it now button uh, from a cart to a lock. And just that small tweak, when they did their A-B testing, it upped the conversions by, I think it was 6%. Yeah, so uh, the, the Magento Mobile Optimization Initiative, uh, they've been collecting some, some interesting data. And, you know, different sites, these treatments, these tests, these A-B tests will have different results. Um, TJ, I, I know you've, you know, had some experience uh, and, and, and seen a lot of this data as well. Um, um, I'm not sure if, if you've got any merchants that are leveraging it, but it, it's a good example of where conversion rate optimization kicks in. Um, and to me, can, well, I, I'm a fan of the, of the mobile optimization initiative. I think there's a bigger conversation to be had around conversion rate optimization, optimizing average order value, customer lifetime value. Um, that's probably a whole other episode, <laughs> maybe one that we'll bring, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll bring another day. We've tackled it a few different ways already on the Jet Rails podcast, and I know we'll tackle it a few different, you know, in the future. Uh, there are things that you can do to your product page. And so I actually like that one where just on the checkout button, changing it from a little cart logo, a little cart icon um, to a lock, to a keep, uh, uh, you know, to a... a you know, lock and key kind of a look, um, that that increased conversion, something like six or 7% on average. Um, there were other things that on sites that don't typically use coupons, if you hide the coupon field and just tighten things up, that it, it helped on the checkout page on the, uh, uh, on the card page. There are, are different things that you can do on the product page specifically. You know, I, I try not to go negative in life in general. Um, I, I try as best as I, I can. Um, and so there are a lot of positive things that you can do. And, you know, we've talked about loading speed optimization. I think um, on the product page itself, there are other treatments that you can test, other things that you can test, including quick checkout buttons um, for like, you know, PayPal, Amazon Pay, et cetera, things that you can do with systems like Bolt. Um, I, I think that there are also options for adding you know, how many loyalty reward points you're going to get, which if you buy this product from somewhere else, you're not going to get. And maybe for the holidays, you offer double points or something special. Um, you can uh, have great reviews on the page and, you know, do have things that, that uh, you know, instill 
value. Obviously, great photos, great videos on the product page, great content itself. Um, the list goes on and on and on to what you can do to that product page to really make it shine. Um, and I, I think there's a lot that you can do without necessarily making the the user feel like you're, you know, you're, you're pushing them too much. Um, you can push them without <laughs> uh, forcing it. Yeah. And in general, when we're talking something like Black Friday, most of these sales are timed. So they know that um, that, that price is today only. Um, so they don't have long. And in some cases, what I do see work is showing how much inventory is left. So when it's running low, that can be a good thing. I, I have seen sites where I felt like they were not telling the truth about it. Or I've seen sites where I see a scrolling banner saying, oh, you know, John and, you know, and, and Podunk bought one, you know, and it keeps scrolling a marquee and there keep being sales. And I don't necessarily believe it. Um, you know, when I'm on that site at three in the morning and the sales are just too frequent for what it is <laughs> and for the traffic that that site garners, which I can, you know, I've got tools, I know <laughs> Yeah, that uh, I, I mean, maybe I'm too educated a consumer, but I, I'd rather focus on the stuff that, that's going to represent the brand better and, and build a better audience that, uh, you know, that, that feels good about the purchase. Yeah, I and agree. Yeah. You, you ever hear the term less is more? Sometimes you get rid of the clutter. Um, another one of the, um, uh, the tests, I'm just pulling it up on my phone. I found the picture I took uh, at that session in New York. They uh, did an A-B test where the control, there was a wish list um, function there. It was right by the uh, uh, checkout button. And then they removed the add to wish list uh, functionality. Conversions went up by... 5.6, whatever, whatever it is. Percent on average, yeah. And and, yeah. and that'll work for, let's say, a site that, um, as, as we, you know, as was talked about in that session, maybe that sells fashion that changes quickly anyway. And so this list might not do as much good um, where for, I don't know, you know, for a store with a big catalog and, you know, you're, you're trying to, you know, work toward what you're going to get in the future and you're not going to buy immediately. Um, the wish list is going to be more helpful. So there's a lot that a lot of logic that you can play there. I've written a few guides through the years on conversion rate optimization and and uh, you know ideas that you can potentially apply. Every site's different, but um, but I, I think it takes a more holistic look. And my favorite way of doing it is to pick, let's say, ten things that make sense, and then pick you know, a, f a, a few of them to apply this quarter and test out. Maybe not again, you know, I like code freezes and things as you get into the holidays, but choosing between uh, logically better options versus only looking at one um, is a great strategy for that type of a, an effort. Or just check the, the websites that your wife uh, goes to visit all the time or wherever <laughs> she buys, check those out because they're doing something right. So, Miha, you know, just to recap there, you know, I think I think we kind of agree, you know, urgency is useful and important. Don't overuse it. I mean, maybe test it, but don't be fake about it. Uh, you know, if it's actually ending at the end of the day, then fine. If it's actually changing at a certain time, then fine. But I, I wouldn't go um, trying to create fake urgency. Um, all right. So we've got one mm -hmm. last question here in the chat on LinkedIn uh, from George Marcos. George, thanks for watching. Thank you for your question. Um, what is the solution to load checkout page fast? Because Magento Checkout um, can load slowly. One thing we touched on earlier is Bolt. Um, you, you also, you know, there are some things you could do to Magento Checkout to make it uh, quicker. You know, don't don't have too many shipping options. Make sure you're shipping whatever shipping options you're using uh, are you know optimized and fast. You don't have some um, shipping module in there that's causing you a bunch of headache. Uh, you know, make sure you don't have some, uh, you know, 30 different payment options in there. Uh, you know, have a good host that understands Magento and helps you debug those things. Like, you know, I don't know if I can think of one right now that might happen to be on this live stream that you could talk to. Um, but give JetRails a call and, and see if they can help you with that. Uh, and then outside of that, what a lot of our customers and more and more people we're seeing are, are moving toward a hosted checkout solution like Bolt. 
uh, where you just kind of punt the checkout all together and it is something that is streamlined and optimized and you know they have the data from all of the merchants that are using it so they can continuously improve that process and some of the case studies that they put out there that bolt puts out there about the conversion rate improvements from stock magento to their cart is just astonishing um, so be sure to go check that out anything else you guys could think of to help improve magento's checkout you know i I'm always careful when it comes to the one-step checkout extensions. Some of them can speed things up, but you've got to uh, watch out for conflicts with other uh, Magento extensions that may impact the checkout. Um, you know, there, there's some decent ones out there, um, but I, you know, I always take that with a grain of salt. That I, I do like to keep either the native Magento checkout or go to something hosted like like Bolt um, as a first preference. But there are things that some of these one-step checkouts do that even something like if you're on a mobile phone, when it's time to type in a phone number, um, popping up with a key, your phone keypad the way that you would if you were actually dialing a phone number instead of your regular keyboard where it's harder to hit the numbers. Little things that help people get through the checkout process faster. There, there's things that you can do for um, you know, helping to auto-populate parts of the, uh, the address that you're shipping to things like that, where, you know, they put in the zip code and the city auto populates, things like that, um, just to get the, the shopper through checkout fast. So there are things that you can add. Um, I, my personal preference is, is when possible, go native and simple, or try to go towards something like Bolt when possible. But there's some folks that are very happy with the, uh, the in-between where they, they do a lot of their own optimization, use maybe a Magento extension to optimize um, you know, from from the hosting standpoint, no, no matter what, you've got to make sure that the speed is moving fast getting up to the checkout. And if your checkout is, you know, is on-prem, is is running out of Magento, you've got to make sure that you've got enough <laughs> bandwidth, so to speak. You've got enough resource uh, that's going to get through the checkout and you're not going to bottleneck anywhere server side, especially when you've got peak traffic and people bombarding um, the checkout. So... And a lot George, of stuff there. George mentions that he's using Amnesty. I'm assuming the Amnesty one-step checkout module. Um, George, that, that could be your problem, could not be your problem. Again, hopefully you're working with a Magento specialist host. If you've got this thing hosted on GoDaddy or something, find a Magento specialist host um, and see if you know they can help you uh, debugging diagnose. So first thing I would do is put that thing on a staging site rip that amnesty module out of there and see how the default checkout loads. Uh, if it's faster, then that's probably a pretty good sign. It's with, uh, it's either with amnesty or it's with your own special concoction of amnesty and other modules that you have installed on the website. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's where I would go as far as trying to, to debug that you guys have any more insights on how to best go yeah. about debugging a slow checkout. And I think you did hit the nail on the head with, with uh, something earlier where um, depending on what you've got running in there, um, so what APIs are being called, whether it's uh, third party for sales tax management, um, you know, APIs for shipping rates, other things that uh, there's a lot of things that come together in the checkout. It's one of the more complex areas of the site. So um, I would also be checking the error and exception logs and things, keeping an eye out for anything that's screaming out at you that's having a hard time loading. Um, you know, you, you can run certain tests, uh, you know, to to see, uh, you know, if anything's having a hard time loading in the browser, if anything's failing. Um, you know, I, I think probably a bigger debugging conversation. Tom, any other thoughts from your perspective? Yeah, I, you know, just with my experience and and chatting with Amnesty, they're a great company. Um, I've always had uh, great responses. Their support has been uh, phenomenal for the most part. So before you go jumping through too many hoops, I would take a minute and just reach out to their support team and see how they can help assist with that as well. And if That's you do run idea. into obstacles, where, you know, feel free to reach out to to me personally um, outside of this, and I can introduce you to some of the contacts over at Amnesty. They might be able to help you out a little a little bit quicker. Yeah, they've even supplied a blog post, uh, guest post for for JetRails on that one step checkout. So we know that it's uh, it's important to them. It's near and dear to them. So if there is an issue, I'm sure cool. that uh, there are ways that they can help too. That's great, Tom. 
And like TJ mentioned before, it could be just a concoction of things. It's it might not even be any one particular thing's fault. So, yeah, it's definitely definitely not always a simple thing to figure out. But um, we are we've been going for about an hour and ten minutes now. So uh, I think we are probably about to call it an afternoon. But I do have a couple of comments in the chat here. I wanted to make sure I mention uh, Dennis Z mentions that if you're putting a countdown module, please make sure that it does not break your caching. Uh, good point, Dennis. Uh, wanted to make sure I get that in there. And then Jarrett E in the chat as well. Have your agency look into that checkout module also. I've seen some of those modules that have cache busting features that can actually cause performance to decline. So two um, cache tips from everybody. Um, I appreciate everybody watching. If you guys would um, go ahead and tell everybody how they can get in touch with you if they want to find out more about Jet Rails. Sure. They can just go right to jetrails.com. And we've got a couple of contact forms right there and nice and easy. Uh, or uh, just give us a call. We have an 800 number uh, on jetrails.com. Um, or shoot us an email directly, uh, tom.p at jetrails.com. Nice and simple. Yeah, you'll find us on Twitter at JetRails, LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, you know, if you want to get more tips and tricks from us, check out our blog or subscribe to the JetRails podcast. Uh, yeah, we try to be wherever the merchants are. Awesome, guys. Thanks for uh, coming on. To next week, um, I don't think I have a live stream scheduled on this channel. I'm actually going to be live streaming next Friday on Adobe's channels. Ooh. Uh, we'll see if that, I may have to, I, I don't know if I can mess that one up or, you know, we'll see. Watch, go subscribe to Adobe or follow Adobe, especially on LinkedIn. I know we'll be live streaming on LinkedIn. I'm going to have Peter Sheldon and we're going to be talking about the Gardner Magic Quadrant, what that means for Magento, why that's important. If you don't know what the Gardner Magic Quadrant is, then look it up. Tune in, watch us over on that channel. Come over, wave, say hi. They've had so much more successful big uh, YouTubers and content creators uh, host on that channel. I need a big showing. I need you guys to help me out. Come over there. Let's see if we can continue to fool people into thinking I know what I'm doing when it comes to hosting these live streams. Um, and I thank you all for watching. <laughs> You, um, you are, we've been watching you forever. It, it's an honor to be here. Uh, we, we really appreciate it. There, there's no way you can mess up a, a live stream, TJ. We've been watching you too long. You've got it nailed down. Well, I appreciate it. I, pre I don't know if they're going to let me drink on it, though. We'll see how far that goes. <laughs> <laughs> they they may have limitations around what I can do on the Adobe channels, but uh, it's going to be fun. We're going to do that next Friday. Um, I'm not 100% sure of the time yet. Um, we're still batting around a couple of different times, but I know we'll be on their LinkedIn channel. I may have a live stream. Otherwise, I'm in New York for a few days next week. Um, so we'll we'll see. But after that, we're going to get cranked back up hard and heavy on these. Um, trying to Still trying to get the commercial for the Mage Mojo sponsorship up. They're going to get mad at me. They're going to ask for all their money back if I don't hurry the hell up and get that commercial done. Uh, but yeah. next live stream, we'll have it. I promise. I'll have it. Well, let's let's do the first uh, virtual uh, toast to uh, success for all of our co uh, clients for this Black Friday. So, to Black Friday. It's a Black Friday. Black Friday. All right, guys. We will see everybody next week, uh, and thanks for tuning in.